the Prophet ﷺ told us that the angels look at the earth like we look at the heavens. And just as we see the lights of the stars, they see the houses where Allah's name is mentioned. The Prophet ﷺ said to uh, always put dhikrullah in your gatherings. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala adurukum ala ala afdari amarikum wa arfa'iha and the marikikum. Uh, he said, let me tell you the best thing that you can do. It's better than, uh, it's the highest in the ranks with your Lord. It's better than gold and silver. It's, it's better than uh, jihad fi sabilihi. He said, dhikrullah. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, كَثُرَتْ عَلَيَّ شَرَعِيُ الْإِسْلَامِ There's too many rules. He said, دُلِّنِي عَرْشَيْنْ أَتَشَبَّثُ بِهِ Just give me something that I can cling to. Uh, because he said there's the rules, there's too many rules. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, فَارِقَ الدُّنْيَا وَإِسَانُكَ رَطَبًا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Leave this world and your tongue is moist with the dhikr of Allah. You just be with the dhikr of Allah. And the best dhikr, afdalu adhkar al-Qur'an. Afdalu dhikri la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah is from the Qur'an. It's the highest uh, reality, la ilaha illallah. So the best thing that you can do is uh, Qur'an, tirawat al-Qur'an, dhikr al-Qur'an. Especially in these times, these dark times, it used to be the Muslims, they had like a... Um, you know, they had like herd immunity. You, know, you have herd immunity because you have enough people that have antibodies to a disease. So then that 15% that doesn't, th th those, those people are protected because the 85% have that immunity. The, the Ummah used to be like that. You had most of the people were doing dhikr. And so that, that percentage that wasn't was in the herd immunity. They just were protected because they were with uh, the people. If you read the rahalat uh, of, the, of the great scholars who made journeys from Morocco, from Mauritania, uh, if you read their journals, and they're worth reading, because you see wherever they went, the mosques were filled with people doing Khatam al-Quran, Talai al-Khirat, Khatam al-Bukhari, uh, all these things were just normal things in the ummah, and now they're unusual things. In fact, they're so unusual, people think they're bid'ah. <laughs> That's how unusual they are. Because people actually think they're bid'ah. But this is the, the tradition of the Muslims. Sayyidina Aisha, Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu anhu said, Man ahdata fi amrina ma laysa minhu fahuwa raddun. If they bring things that aren't from the religion, reading the hadith of the Prophet is from the religion. Reading the prayers on the Prophet is from the religion. These things are from the religion. They're not, they're not innovations. So uh, the best thing is, is the Qur'an. Um, and, and if you don't have a word from the Qur'an, you're really, uh, it's not a good situation. For if, you're, if you're serious about this religion, you have to have a word of the Qur'an, even if it's a few ayahs every day. But just doing a word from the Qur'an. Uh, the Sudanese, they say, Lima and the word, gird. You know, if you don't have a word, you're a monkey. Lima and the word, gird. You don't want to be a monkey. You want to be a human being, an insan. And, and, and uh, the Raghb uh, al-Isbahani, he says, الجهر انسلاخ الإنسان من إنسانيته that ignorance is the flaying of the humanity from the human being you have to earn your your uh, you know your maqam with Allah and, and, and the best way to do it is to read the Quran and practice the Quran the Prophet كان خرق القرآن لما عائشة سئلت كيف كان خرق you are ala, you know, harf like he was on the highest uh, moral ethos, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so, where did he get that from? 
It, well, part of it was from the akhlaq that uh, was in his community, and that's why he said, "Inna li ma kanu I was sent to complete, you know, because they had things like sidq al hadith, you know, honesty, wafa, loyalty. The Arabs had those things before Islam, but the Islam came wahadaba. It it polished everything. It, it 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 polished their character, and that's why they were the best people, and they were chosen to take this message. With the Prophet that, that kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas for all of humanity. And they did it. Wherever they went, they took light, they took knowledge. Everywhere the Muslims went, they brought knowledge with them, they brought beauty with them, they brought ihsan. Whatever they did, they, they did it with ihsan. In Allah katab al ihsan ala kulli shay. Allah has decreed ihsan in everything. In everything. There's ihsan. There's nothing that you can't do without ihsan. And so, Ihsan uh, of Qur'an, one of the most important things, because I guarantee you that Tajweed is, is the basis of everything. Like it all builds up from there. If you can't recite the Qur'an properly, and if you're not interested in reciting the Qur'an properly, if you're not dedicated to reciting the Qur'an properly, then you, your religion is completely skewed. You don't, because that, that, that's, that's something, that's the Ihsan of all Ihsan that you should have, is to recite the Qur'an the way Allah loves it to be recited. Right? Like you're supposed to take this Khudr Kitab, Ya Yahya, Khudr Kitab bi Quwa. Take this book with Quwa. You know, take it with Quwa. You, you have to take the book. And that's why if you begin with the Itqan in your recitation, then what will follow from that? And that's why one of the beauties of the Arabic, many beauties, but one of the beauties is, are these words that have all these amazing meanings. So, you know, وَرْقَمْرِ إِذَا تَرَاهَا You know, the, the moon follows the sun. So, tala yatlu means to follow. But it also means to recite. الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِي Right? So reciting it is a type of following it. When you recite it with ihsan, it's an indication of who you are. If you don't recite it with ihsan, that's another indication of who you are. If at least you should be attempting, like uh, he says, uh, Imam al-Jazari, وَلَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ تَرْكِهِ إِلَّا رِيَاضَةُ إِمْرِئٍ بِفَكِّهِ there's, there's nothing between you and the Qur'an except exercising your jaw. Right? To practice this, this, uh, this beautiful science that we've been given of tajweed. It's a beautiful science. And no religion has this. Because Allah said, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا ذِكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ We revealed this book and we have taken upon ourselves to preserve the book. And one of the most important ways it was preserved was with tajweed. Look at these men, where did they come from? Nafi'. Where did he come from? Ibn Kathir. Ibn Amr. Abu Amr, Hamza, Asim, Al Kisai, Abu Jafar, Al Madani, Yaqub Al Hadrami, Khalaf, Ibn Hisham. Where did they come from? What gave them that himma to want to preserve this book? And then they had these students that wouldn't leave them until they mastered what they had. Imam Nafi had Warsh and Qalun. He read it with him multiple times. Nafi' loved Warsh because of his hirs. He was blonde hair, blue eyes. And his, his teacher was, was, they said that he was uh, like ebony. He was so dark. So this blonde hair, blue eyed Egyptian taking it from this, uh, this Mola, you know, this amazing uh, black man from, uh, from Iran. This is our religion. Imam Hafs, uh, he stayed with Asim. He was related to him by marriage. But he stayed with Asim, Shu'bah, uh, until they mastered this. And then we have it given exactly how it's pronounced, everything. There's, uh, uh, this is one of the few things in our entire religion, there's almost no difference of opinion. And that's why you can go from Indonesia all the way to California. And somebody, they're either reciting it correctly or not. And the masters will tell you.